I did this on my very first motorcycle trip uh, through Mexico and Central America and I put my bike on one of these barges and it just looked like my bike was like three times taller than the boat was wide. So I needed to sort of come back here and just see was I correct in my recollection or no way, like it was not nearly that crazy. They do have the smaller ones with the single like plank in the middle and it's for the small bikes and that's it. So yeah, like my recollection was pretty solid. Far from a glamorous spot that we've found, and yet, when you make your way up this way on this burned out two-story structure, you have what could be really a perfect camping terrace over the beach. So Moxie generally is not really supposed to be on our thermal rests, but in the morning sometimes I'll let her in as I'm getting things packed up and ready to go. What service? I get my espresso, or my latte actually that Greg made me, here in the tent, and it's just such a beautiful morning. So it's all about placement. You can bring the most comfortable travel bed ever, but if you don't put it in the right spot, Solid. 
Let me tell you a little bit about the Go Roughly Around the World adventure, supporting Girl Up. It's going to be an 18-month adventure across five continents where I'll be riding my motorcycle with Moxie on the back in her K9 moto cockpit. The fundraiser is to support Girl Up, which was founded by the United Nations Foundation, and their whole goal is to do leadership and development training for girls around the world. They work in over 120 countries, and they have helped over 90,000 girls. The goal is to raise $100,000 for Girl Up during this adventure. So I really hope that you'll go to goroughly.com slash world dash adventure to donate today and help us reach that $100,000 goal. have to be careful because coconut is a laxative. Lay down. Let's see. Lay down. Hey. Oh. What is, what, is this, what is this business? I don't know. We just got the tail screwed. There we go. Normally let's see. In. Tuck in. Okay, so let's Tuck in. Harness there you. we go. Let's see. What a big furry bulk you are. Uh, So we actually created the sun shield um, for one of the Mexican dogs that doesn't have fur. Um, and so uh, the owner wanted to make sure that the dog was going to be protected from the elements. And so that's how we started. For Moxie, um, being a black dog, yeah, she does get hot and we would put the sun shield. So it's really simple. It clips in to her collar so that it doesn't fall off from the front and the wind is blowing through. She just took it through her collar. And then the rest just actually clips in quite simply here in the front using the front anchor. The side, the back. And you can see there's also the, the vent here so that wind can escape and it can come in. It's a great idea to do this right where the, the cars are getting on and off the barges and there's all the noise. Okay, good job. So we actually were trying to find a hotel for quite a while yesterday and just was not finding anywhere that they were going to accept Moxie. Um, but we ended up at this place and uh, it was perfect. And so today we are going to be doing the hike. We're going to be hiking the, um, the 
Kampala volcano, which at the top has a crater lake. So and supposedly it's really cold, uh, the water, but it's like uh, crystal clear. So we're going to go and do that. We get to camp right by there. It's going to be a short hike, only about like an hour or two hours, it says, I think. Um, and the the reason why we wanted to do this hike was we wanted to try out the giant loop uh, Tillamook bags as backpacks um, because that's an easy way for us to be able to do these types of hikes when we're on the road without having to carry a big backpack. Jess is in the grocery shopping for tonight's volcano camping dinner. And Moxie and I are just hanging out and waiting for her to... Now she's going to another place. So this is gonna be an extravaganza. She's gotta get all of the right ingredients. And this is not me complaining because she makes amazing things and I am the primary beneficiary. This is a secondary beneficiary. to the parking of the uh, Ipala volcano. There was like open air parking, but we asked the guys there if it was gonna be secure for their bikes and the guy offered us to park at his home. So we're here in this nice little home here um, and they've got chickens and they've got a puppy. Who's making such a racket? It's you, you are, you little guy. Are you taking shelter from Moxie? Yeah, yeah. And Mox has just been snuffing around. And so now we are going to unpack the bags, repack them so that we can take them up, and then uh, we will be on our way. Moxie's Costa Queen for healthy hips. The first time trying the Tillamooks' backpacks. Moxie, leave it. I know you're all excited. All right, so it is a about a two kilometer hike or so. Guy said that it'll take us an hour or so. Leave it, I think it'll take us a little longer. He said it'll take Moxie 15 minutes. I believe that. Let's time us, it's 11.19. Starting out at 11.19. So we're going from about 800 meters to 1600 meters. We've got somebody hiding here who's not so friendly. Yeah, are you going to follow us? Are you joining the pack? We don't have enough food. With me! To the left. To the left. Se llama Bruno. Ah, ok, genial. Pues jueguen ahí arriba, en la cumbre. Hasta pronto. They were impressed with Moxie's obedience. What happened with Evelyn? Evelyn was eating uh, chicharrones uh -huh. and uh, they were like, you know, crunchy, like really hard. And she broke one tooth oh, and that tooth like damaged the other tooth. Oh no. And that was on Sunday, Monday. There was no doctor available, I guess, because it's the end of the year, uh, dentist, yeah. surgeon, oral surgeon. Finally, they got her into surgery yesterday. Okay. This was Wednesday. So now her whole face is like exploded. Oh. And obviously she's in some pain. So needed to inform me that her, like that the cockpit that they're working on that's due on too Tuesday good. is going to be a little bit delayed. Oh, so too bad. Work through the, the 
details of that. We're getting close to the top. I'm excited to be in this crater lake. Hopefully it's going to be nice and we can all get some nice water and relax. So it is far from a deserted peak. There is a little bit of an aldea or like village, neighborhood. There's a cafeteria and tienda. Meanwhile, the pump has been on the whole time. It's like just hammering away. To have the pump going like this all day when the tourists are here, like I don't, I don't get it. Like it's brutal. It's not pleasant. Makes me want to turn on our uh, our stove just for the white noise. He had to tell you what he was giving. So we have the Alados guy over here, and uh, he just had to come by ringing his bell. Ready. Between the pump going on over there and the drone buzzing overhead and the kids bathing in the crater lake where you're not supposed to bathe and our like warp speed stove here that's now boiling. Like I couldn't have <laughs> I never burned myself, never cut myself, never had to tie Jessica's thumb around my thumb because I was bleeding out at a campsite and didn't, we didn't have our first aid kit. None of that has ever happened. Basically, I cut my thumb in a, the stupidest way possible, doing something stupid with a knife. And the first aid kit is back at the bikes, which is about 15 minutes hike up. So, um, we're using one of Jessica's underwear. <laughs> and that's, that's how this is going. I'm like, alone and afraid, or what is it? Scared and alone and alone and... Alone and afraid. Alone no, and no. afraid. Naked and afraid. Naked and afraid. Naked and afraid and alone. Naked and al no, alone and naked? No. no. Survivor man meets naked and alone and afraid. at finding flat ground for the tent and there is just none to be found here our tent is right in the pathway but it is quite literally the only flat ground as it would appear none of these people are camping here I think probably there's only gonna be a few actual parties that are camping everybody else is here for the day so what's for dinner just some uh, chopped up vegetables and some avocado here, onions, tomatoes, zucchini, with some of these quinoa crackers and some lemon. started again as you can hear I'm sure the water pump that goes up to Agua Blanca started this morning we have no idea what time it is because both of our phones died and we don't have a uh, charger with us we've got the cable but not the power pack but uh, yeah it was a really nice night in the end uh, we went to bed very early at like 6 30 and we listened to podcast until my phone died um, and then it was just a really calm like beautiful night there were so many stars out uh, it was just, uh, it was nice, and it was nice that this uh, pump wasn't on all night. Can we stay here for a week or so? Just watch the corn grow in the fields. I 
So we found this hotel outside of Chiquimula and they have a hippodrome which is like a horse racing track and they've got sort of a mini almost like petting zoo thing going on here so they've got some random animals and things like that a couple of hotels on the site a couple of uh, swimming pools several restaurants it's like this sort of rustic complex and basically we just napped most of the afternoon because we were exhausted after the volcano and everything and now we're sort of emerging to walk and poop moxie not us and then to feed I will sneak a note in your pocket Hi guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the episode. One of the things that I really enjoy is cooking at the campsite. And look, I know that not everybody enjoys cooking and that some people will prefer to have like freeze dried foods or prepared foods, something where they don't have to do all this hoopla at the campsite. But for me, you know, I really enjoy the process of cooking from scratch. And when you're out there cooking at the campsite, things just taste that much better. Uh, but I understand it. If you're just going for a couple of days, freeze-dried foods, that's great. But if you're on a multi-day trip or multi-week or month trip, then you're going to need to pick up things along the way. And finding freeze-dried foods can be difficult. Um, so I prefer to, to cook from scratch. And I've done a bunch of different types of meals, uh, things like lentil sloppy joes or a fresh vegetable soup. Um, to things like uh, cheese fondue with fresh baked bread or apple cobblers. I love desserts, so I do a lot of desserts. Um, but it, it just makes it that much interest, more interesting for me to be camping, uh, that I get to try di different recipes out, uh, and we just get to enjoy our time outside. And so what I do is when we're riding through a main city, I'll stop at a supermarket and I'll stock up on like the basics, the things that I know that I'm not going to be able to find in a smaller town. Then when we're on our way and we're about to camp, we'll stop at those local fruits and vegetable stands on the side of the road or a local market and pick up those fruits and vegetables to really round out the recipes. And for me, the important thing is the cookware that you use. So in the past, we used to use Greg's dad's old cookware. It was like that metal cookware that was like definitely not nonstick. Like you could not flip a pancake, regardless of how much oil or butter you put on that thing. It would just get stuck and it would burn. Um, and it made cooking just really unpleasant. Uh, so we graduated uh, from that cookware. And now I have like a, a basic like GSI outdoors, like backpacker uh, stackable set. So it's got like two pots, a couple of uh, bowls and plates, and everything is really stackable. It's not the smallest set, but it has everything that I need to make the types of meals that I want to cook. And I know that some people will do just fine with like one little frying pan, but like I said, like I enjoy doing a bunch of different types of things. So normally that requires two pots or it requires a frying pan and a pot. So this way, it's this is the best thing that I could find in terms of having uh, what I needed for the smallest amount of space. Another thing that's essential for me is a table. Um, I carry along a, like a small folding table, which is basically the size of like a camp chair when you roll it up. And for me, it was a game changer. Not having to have food on the ground and being able to raise it up 
That way you won't get insects in it, you won't get dirt in it, especially when Moxie's digging up her hucker on the ground right beside me. It's just nice to have a table uh, when you're cooking. So that's a luxury that I bring along. Um, I, I, I I would recommend it if you have the space for it. It just really helped make the experience that much more enjoyable. And I look for different types of recipes. Like I said, I do a bunch of different things. So I'll look on Pinterest, I'll look online. And normally the types of recipes that I'll search for are things that I know that you can just do on the stovetop. So like stovetop recipes, things that don't require extended like oven time. Um, those things seem to work really well for me. And Greg and I are vegetarian, so we obviously don't do meat, uh, but there are so many vegetarian options out there that uh, allow us to try different types of vegetables in the different places that we travel. I hope this gave you some good food for thought when it comes to camp cooking. And for those of you who have been doing it for a long time and have some good camping recipes that are vegetarian, please add them to the comments below. I'd love to try them out. Anyhow, don't forget to subscribe to us here on YouTube and at GoRoughly for Facebook and Instagram. Thanks, guys.